The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens Dramatised by Barry Campbell and Constance Cox With Freddie Jones, Paul Chapman, Douglas Livingstone, Elizabeth Spriggs and Simon Cadell as Charles Dickens Part 4 The Rambulations and Proposals Bristol and Bath, coach this way! Coach the auction over there! Find the horses there! Change that there, team, quick boy! Yes, sir. Oh, your coach is ready, Mr. Weller. Well, I am ready, William, when my passengers hit. The driver, is this the Ipswich coach? That's right, sir. Uh, I have some rather important luggage. I wish to see it safely stowed. Well, the ostler will do that for you, sir. Just ask him over there. Ah, ostler? Sir? I wish you to see particularly my dad. Morning, oldie. Ah, oh, morning, Sammy. There's your governor. He's a cabinet, having two mile of danger and aprons. <laughs> as, as, as the mother-in-law this morning. Oh, clear, Sammy, clear. She's been getting rather in the Methodistical order lately. Uncommon pious, to be sure. She's too good a creature for me, Sammy. I feels I don't deserve her. That's very self-denying, are you? Yeah, what do you think them women goes and does tougher day, Sammy? Don't know what. Goes and gets up a grand tea drinking for a fella they calls their shepherd. Well, what with your mother-in-law a worrying me to go, and what with looking forward to some queer starts if I did, I'll put me name down for a ticket. You never finish your tea drink, you? Yeah, Friday evening it was. So off I goes with the old woman, and we walks up into a first floor where there was tea things for thirty, and a whole lot of women as begins looking at me as if they'd never seen a rather stout gentleman of eight and fifty before. Well, you are a rather remarkable old fella. Yeah. Well, by a by, a lanky chap with a red nose and a white neckcloth rushes up and sings out, Here's the shepherd to come to visit his faithful flock. And in comes a fat chap with a great white face, smiling away like clockwork. What was the red nose chap then? A uh, deputy shepherd, Sammy. Well, then there was six goings on. The kiss of peace, he says. And he kissed of him in all round. And then he done, the red nose chap began. I was just thinking whether I hadn't better begin to, when in comes the tea and your mother-in-law. Then the shepherd, he pulls up all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, there is the miserable sinner. And all of him in groans and looks at me. When I got rather vile at this, so I says, My friend, did you apply that air observation to me? And instead of begging my pardon as any gentleman would, he called me a whistle. A what? A whistle, Sammy. A whistle of wrath. So, my blood being regularly up, I first give him two or three for himself, then two or three more to hand over to the red nose chap, and I walk so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, here's your governor, the size of life. Oh, hello. Fine morning, sir. Thank you. Uh, beautiful, Mr. Weller. Are we leaving soon? Soon as we can, sir. Good, I beg your pardon, sir. Yes. Uh, are you going to Ipswich? I am. Extraordinary coincidence. So am I. Uh, going outside? I am. Oh, bless my soul, how remarkable. Mm. I am too. Uh, We're positively going together. <laughs> it's a good thing for both of us, isn't it? Well, it's a very different thing from solitude, ain't it? There's no denying that, sir. That's what I call a self-evident proposition, as the dog's meat man said when the housemaid told him he weren't a gentleman. Uh, uh, friend of yours, sir? <laughs> Not exactly a friend. The fact is, he's my servant, but I allow him to take a good many liberties. Oh. Uh, between ourselves, I flatter myself he's an original, and I'm rather proud of him. Ah, that, you see, is a matter of taste. I'm not fond of anything original. I don't see the necessity for it. Uh, what is your name, sir? Pickwick. Ah, Pickwick here. Yeah. I'd like to know a man's name. Save so much trouble. Uh, there's my card, sir. Ah. Peter Magnus is the name, you'll observe. It's rather a good name, I think, sir. Oh, a very good name indeed. <laughs> Curious circumstance about those initials, sir. P.M. Post Meridian. Oh. <laughs> In hasty notes to intimate acquaintances, I sometimes sign myself Afternoon. Oh. <laughs> it amuses my friends very much, Mr. Pickwick. <laughs> I, I imagine it does, Mr. Pickwick. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Time uh, is yes. all for you, please. Uh, 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 is all my luggage in? All in, sir. Uh, uh, is uh, the red bag in? And the striped bag? Four uh, boots, sir. Uh, uh, and the brown paper parcel? Uh, and the leather uh, hat box? They're all uh, in, sir. Uh, yes. Well, in that case. Now, William, run about! Joy, Golo! 
take care of the arts, gentlemen. Ooh. Eats as the pirate says. <laughs> That'll do, William! Let him alone! No very nice neighbourhood, this, sir, Whitechapel. It is not indeed, sir. It's a very remarkable circumstance, sir, that poverty and oysters always seem to go together. Is that so, sir? Look down here, sir. There's an oyster stall to every half dozen houses. Blessed if I don't think that when a man's very poor, he rushes out and eats oysters in sheer desperation. Oh, that's right, Sammy. But it's just the same with pickled salmon. But those are two very remarkable facts. The very first place we stop at, I make a note. Same, you know, sir, with pike keepers. Very clear life is a pike keeper. What do you mean by a pike keeper? The older men's a turnpike keeper, gentlemen. Oh, yes, 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 yes. They're all lot of men as has met with some disappointment in life. Consequence of which, they retire from the world and shut themselves up in pikes. Partly with a view of being solitary, and partly to revenge themselves on mankind by taking tolls. Dear me, I never knew that. Oh, fact, sir. If they was gentlemen, you'd call them misanthropes. But as it is, they only takes to pike keeping. With such conversation, possessing the inestimable charm of combining instruction with amusement, did Mr. Weller beguile the tediousness of the journey. And when any pause occurred in Mr. Weller's loquacity, it was abundantly supplied by the desire evinced by Mr. Magnus to make himself acquainted with the personal history of his fellow travellers, and his loudly expressed anxiety at every stage respecting the safety and well-being of the two bags, the leather hat box, and the brown paper parcel. Whoa, my beauties, whoa there. Hold the ridge, boy. Here we are, gentlemen. The great finals, Hipswich. Do you stop here, Mr. Pickwick? I do. Dear me, I never knew anything like these extraordinary coincidences. I stop here too. Oh. I hope we may dine together. With pleasure. I, I'm not quite certain, though, whether my friends have arrived here yet. I must first inquire. Right, sir, let me and the olden help you down. Oh, Thank you, Sam. Uh, there he is, sir. Oh. Ah. Ah. After you unpack for me, you may go and dine with your father. Why, oh, thank you, sir. I cannot regret the absence of your friends, Mr. Pickwick, since it gives me the pleasure of your company. Yeah. Uh, allow me to fill your glass. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. And what, sir, do you think I have come here for? Yeah, really, I must throw myself on your mercy. I should never guess if I were to try all night. <laughs> Why then, uh, what would you think if I said that I've come down here to make a proposal, sir? Think? Why, that you are very likely to succeed. <laughs> oh, no, but you're joking. No, no, I'm not indeed. <laughs> Why then, to let you into a little secret... I think so, too. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Pickwick, though I'm dreadfully jealous by nature. Horrid. Uh, that the lady is in this house. Ah, then you hope to see her tonight? No, 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 no. Wouldn't do, you know, <laughs> after having just come off a journey. I heard she'd be here tonight, and all tomorrow forenoon, and I came down to seize the opportunity. Mm. I think an inn is a good sort of place in which to propose to a single woman, sir. She is more likely to feel the loneliness of her situation in travelling, perhaps, than she would at home. What do you think? Oh. I think... I think it's very probable. Yes. I beg your pardon, Mr. Pickwick, but I am naturally rather curious. Why, pray, have you come down here? I... On a far less pleasant errand, I have come to expose the treachery and falsehood of an individual upon whose truth and honour I placed implicit reliance. Dear me, that's very unpleasant. Mm. It's a, a lady, I presume? Mm. Ah, you won't say. <laughs> Sly, Mr Pickwick, <laughs> Sly. <laughs> well, sir, I wouldn't probe your secrets for the world. But don't mind me if you wish to give vent to your feelings. I know what it is to be jilted, sir. I've endured that sort of thing three or four times. I'm much obliged to you for your condolence on what you presume to be my melancholy case. But, good I gracious, have... it's midnight. Time to go to bed, or I shall be pale tomorrow.